So, we made a Hydromel about six weeks ago, some of you might remember. Today we're going to rack it, bottle it, and show you how to flavor it three different ways. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying. To learn to grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you'll be the first to be notified when we have something new to share. Today, we're working on our Hydromel. You may have remembered this from that video right there. That we made on August, well, the Hydromel was made on August 6th. Today is September... Something. 20th. And we actually did a tasting on this. I don't know when the video aired, but it'll be up there. Uh, we actually did a tasting on this on the 20th of August, too, when we said that it was a little thin and probably needed a little flavoring. So what we're going to do... One other point that I'd like to make before we don't get too far. Yourself. I'm going to try not to burn myself, because if you notice, I have no injuries today. I don't know how that happened. I am incredibly accident prone. When Brian answered the question about what happened to Derek's finger, he was trying to be really nice. My <laughs> finger was... I was attacked viciously oh, by a weed. Then I proceeded Thorn. to stab my own hand, trying to remove the pit from an avocado. And then, oh, I was putting a saw away and cut my finger there and the back of my hand there. So yeah, I'm accident prone. But in our tasting of the Hydromel, one of our complaints or observations of the Hydromel was that it was incredibly cloudy and milky. Oh, yeah. Well, not incredibly, it was pretty cloudy. Sort of cloudy. I don't know if it shows. Yeah, yeah it shows. It's, it's pretty crystal clear. It is beautifully clear right now. It's been clear for a while. We just How haven't had time to make the video. How did we let that happen? Time. That the, was it. The biggest ingredient in any brew. We just let the yeast naturally flocculate out of solution. It landed on the bottom. You the big words today. Yeah. That's impressive. So, we didn't use any chemicals or additives or whatever word you want to use. <laughs> To make this get clear. We didn't use any finings or anything like that. We just no. used time. Yeah. Which is like the way we like to do it. I mean, if, you know, if it just didn't clear and it tasted yeasty, I might try some other stuff, but I wouldn't be going to some of the commercially made finings because the jury's out. But some of them have shown in studies to not be so healthy. I don't want to make any broad statements until I've actually done the full research on it, but a few people have hinted at it, and the minor bit of research I did said that some of them might not be so healthy for us. So I'm going to avoid them. One of the commonly used um, natural methods to clear a brew is the addition of egg whites. We have chickens. We currently have four dozen fresh eggs in our refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's whites. a pasta video coming your way real soon. <laughs> And egg whites, obviously, is not in... It's not bad for you. Yeah, and it's we have surplus of them, so... Yeah, we have too many. There you go. Anyway, so the three flavors we're going to do are going to be, one, I'm going to just add some tannins to the base hydromel because I think it needs it. It actually came out kind of dry and thin, so I wanted to add some body to it. That's a cup of tea. It's a cup of tea, which is what? Tannins. Tannins. Yeah. Um, the, the next one, we're actually going to oak it, and I have this barrel in a bottle thing that hopefully you can see in there. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, we finally got our exposures and stuff dialed in now, so you can probably see things a lot better. I don't look like I glow from the sun or anything, because I really don't. Um, but anyway, this is just an oak stave that's been spiraled, so you drop it right into a 750ml bottle, leave it there for about two weeks, it does its thing, you remove it and drink it. And it what I've heard is that when you take mead and you oak it, it tastes kind of like bourbon. Which, as you can tell, we, I'm a fan. We like. So I'm hoping that works. I don't really know. Uh, we do have some other stuff coming up where we're going to flavor things different ways, but that's a whole other video. I just wanted to get through this today. The other thing that we're going to do, the third, is we're going to add fruit. I don't know if you can see it, but it's been steaming away over here. What I'm making is a mulberry compote right now. So what I did is I took about five ounces of mulberries. I think it's five and five eighths ounces. I took a handful and then weighed it just so that I could tell you how much it was. Added a good tablespoon and a half of sugar to it and maybe a cup of water. And it's just sitting here boiling away. The idea is I want it to turn into a thick, rich liquid. Now I'm going to strain it off. I'm not going to put all the berries and bits and pieces in there. I actually want to keep this, these liquids because I have a confession to make. I am human. 
I make mistakes. It happened. Remember the Cider Three Ways video? I'm not going to link it because I really don't want to promote it. We made some mistakes and I kind of knew when I was doing it that ooh, this might not be good, but I was hoping it would be fine. I was saying I hoped fermentation was completely done. That's kind of wrong because what happens is with fermentation still sort of going, there's a layer of CO2 that gets built up on top. Okay. The key word in secondary fermentation is fermentation. Is fermentation. It's, it's usually a very slow, very weak fermentation, but there should still be some production of CO2 and a slight production of alcohol. There was none in this cider, which is a little shocking. I didn't know how this worked. We added sugary fruits to it that didn't have preservatives. Most of it was all organic, fresh stuff, and fermentation did not kick back up. That should have been my first clue. There should have been some amount of fermentation, even a very, very minor amount. And I think that's kind of what I was getting at was I wanted some, but not a lot. Well, there was none. I also made the mistake of leaving too much headroom. Even this bottle has a lot of headroom, but I know it's still actively fermenting, so I'm not as concerned. I've smelled it a couple times. It doesn't smell like vinegar. There's no If you molds. watch no the airlock, it's about It'll to bubble there. Bubble, boop, right there. That's not necessarily a sign of active fermentation, but it's been doing that for a couple of weeks still. So I'm but fairly certain. But even if it certain. isn't a sign of fermentation, we know that there's still gases being released, yeah. which means we do have that good blanket of CO2 yeah. the other ones, keeping the oxygen away from our brew. If you can, you can see that it's still bubbling, but you can also see that there's pressure pushing it down this side and up this side. That cider was even. There was no pressure differential. That should have been a warning signal for me. Should have been, but I haven't had many things go bad, so you know I tend to keep a positive attitude and say, eh, it'll work. Yeah, this time it didn't. Um, that's not to say that if you do this at home, it's going to make something bad. Ours turned into basically vinegar, every one of them. And one, one of them was kind of overly moldy. I think it was a Brett. And I didn't like it. We actually made a video where we were showing you guys all this stuff. And I just decided, you know what? It's just too gross. I don't, <laughs> we don't need to show this. So instead I thought, I'll just explain. Because a couple of people have asked, where's that follow-up video? It's not going to get made. We're not going to show that. But I will be honest and say, hey, we made a mistake. You know, and the other thing is, we are wedding photographers. We went through a semi-busy season for a little while there, just didn't have time. I forgot about it, didn't check it as often as I should have, didn't push the cap down, didn't mix it, and mold formed, which turned into other nastiness. And other and then once that happened, I was like, oh geez, I don't even want to deal with this. So it went weeks and weeks and weeks, and we finally we dumped most of it. I did actually manage to save some of the peach, and we made this really cool liqueur, but that's another video. Teasers. Anyway, um, so today we're going to try to keep this under, you know, two hours. What I'm actually doing is we're waiting for this to boil down a little bit. I started this before we started the video. Oh, you don't even need a strainer. Okay, so the first step is we want to rack this off and I'm going to take another hydrometer measurement of it just because I want to make sure that it's still kind of working. There's still something going on and see what it did, you know, just find out what's going on. So I'm going to take the airlock out and it's my lovely assistant who's going to send it to the sanitation bath over there and we'll just move these bottles over here and take this guy come up on there i'm trying not to disturb the lease in the bottom there too much um because you know who wants that in your brew i'm gonna do stick this guy in here if you could manage that for me just kind of make sure he stays in there we're trying not to introduce too much oxygen it's gonna happen especially since we're gonna degas which is not something you've seen me do we don't always but in this case, I want to. I smelled this, and I know there is a little bit of that hydrogen sulfide smell in there. We used to call it the foot, but we don't call it that anymore. So we want to get rid of that. We want to have a nice, fresh, clean mead. And this is just racking. Really, really simple. Put this a little higher than that, and it all, it all comes out by gravity and vacuum. And here we are near the end. Not a whole lot left to go. Just going to give it one last pump. Some air got in there somehow. What you don't want to do is suck up the lease. Okay, once you start... It's done. Okay. There's still a little bit left in there. But for our purposes, this will work. So just snag that. Put this to the side. And now, I'm pretty sure you can see it here. Look how crystal clear that is. I mean, I can see the camera through it. That is, that's beautiful. That's what you're looking for when you make meat. And again, 
didn't use any additives, didn't use any finings, didn't use anything to get it this way. It just happened. It's also only about six weeks old. It smells like mead. However, I do sense a little bit of the hydrogen sulfide. So I'm going to degas. I'm going to do it all wrong. Yes. Well, sanitize again. It was sanitized just a little while ago. We're going to sanitize that. And what I do is I basically just put this in. This is called a whip. You're supposed to attach it to a drill and do the whole thing. I'm just going to put it in and spin it around. And you'll see, probably, the foam start to happen from the CO2 that's in this. Now, a lot of it's probably come out because it's sat for like six weeks. Even if you can't see it in the video, you can certainly smell it here. So you're just going to have to take our word for it. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. But I can see foam. Mm -hmm. And the reason you want to rack it first is because if I just did this in that bottle, I have all that lease in the bottom there, which would just get re-put all the way through everything. We continue to improve on our impromptu setup. So what you don't see is that we've gone from two lights to four lights. We have a mic on a boom. Yeah, we have right there. our professional grade camera. So we're no longer using the iPhone. Um, it's crazy. We have our <laughs> our blackout curtain over the the cat's favorite window. The shelf over here, the, the shelf. bookshelf. That was great because now we can do the sanitization right yeah. there. We had the hot plate. We just never used it before, and it just really makes a lot makes it a lot easier. Sorry for all the blathering on. We just like to share with you guys. Um, we've had a, an overwhelming number of people join our Patreon in the last week it's amazing so thank you um, very very yeah, very much thank you so much you guys are helping but if you join the patreon what you get is we made today i haven't put anybody in it yet a super secret facebook group that's only for patrons and us so that way there's going to be some videos in there that you don't see on youtube i'm trying not to make it all a pay-per-view kind of event but there's going to be some stuff in there that you don't get on youtube we'll have We'll try to be more accessible on there. So if you have questions or if you're working on something, we'll be able to answer better. Um, I still am going to respond to all your comments on our on our channel and still try to answer as many emails as we can. <sighs> we just, you know, if somebody's donating a little bit of money, I got to give them a little something back. You know, I mean, it's only fair. I don't know if you can see her, but we have a rare sighting. This is the cat that I said you probably will never see in a video. This is Gizmo. Can you see her? Yeah, you can see her little face. She's Siamese. She's Jinx's half sister. Um, she was our first cat together. Right. She is our I'm first as, cat. I'm as degassed as I care to be. We're a foamy mess now, yeah. so you can tell that yeah, it works. Throw that in the sanitizer. Now, I have this weird feeling about degassing, okay? I know you're supposed to do it because it gets the CO2 out. However, you're also not supposed to introduce oxygen. So I don't know how you get one out without putting the other one in that no one has been able to explain to me so if anybody can actually tell me maybe i just did that all completely wrong but i've done it that way a million times never really had a problem so that's how we're going to do it today anyway so the next step is actually pretty basic what we're going to do is take the tea bag out of the tea put it to the side grab one of our bottles stick a funnel in it use the proper and pour the tea in And if you have to know how much, it was about four ounces. The tea we used is a proper British tea. PG Tips, which prominently shows in almost all of our videos because of where we keep it. Anyway, so as you can see, it's just in there. I, I put it in hot water. I let it, I mean, as you could tell, it's cooled by now. And it's been steeping for maybe 15 minutes. I mean, it's just, just half a cup, four ounces or so. Don't get too crazy. Exact quantities are not super critical here. Now, you might be wondering, why tea? What did you put tea in there for? Okay, tea has what's called tannins. If you've ever had just a straight black tea, unsweetened, it kind of makes your cheeks pucker a little bit, makes your mouth feel dry like sandpaper. That's actually a good thing, so they tell me. And that's called mouthfeel, okay? This particular mead was a little bit light on mouthfeel, so we wanted to add a little bit of tannin back into it to give it a little bit more... Uh, astringency give it a little bit more body make it you know a little bit more meaty you know what we also have to do what? we need to do a reading oh 
Yeah, so let's do that first. So you need this one. Yeah. And I'm just going to stick this on. This is a bottling wand. It has a little thing on the end there that instead of just letting things run out, it will only run if that's pressed in. Okay, so if you put this here and hold it down to the bottom, you have to hold it below because I didn't put this up on top. We're just all kinds of discombobulated today. Yes, that's a word. Okay, and you want to just let it run until it gets to about there. Is it running? Yep, there it goes. It's going fast. To there? Um, pull up. Eh. The trick to these guys, if you can't, oh, is not to lift them above the area. But uh, you can also just press the pin into the side a little bit and let it run some more. Okay, take the bottling wand. Take the bottle. Yep, of course it's I'm just going to put that in the bottle. I'm going to fill that bottle. We'll do the testing in a minute. Do you want that in? This in here? Yes. So here's our hydrometer. We know how to use one of these and we all have one, right? Right? Please say yes. If you don't, you can find one in the links below in the description. It actually, yeah, it was still actively fermenting. Not super active. It dropped down to 0.998, so it's just a little bit stronger than it was the last time we tasted it, which that's a good thing. It tells me that there's still some active yeast living in here. And um, in case you were wondering if how hot that liquid was, it was probably less than 120 degrees when I put it in. The second some of this mead hit it, it cooled right down. So we're not really looking for much fermentation at this point. We're just looking to flavor it. But as long as it was under that 120 mark, we know it shouldn't in theory, damage any of the yeast that may still be active. Even though there's no sugars left for this yeast to play with. This one, this particular flavored one, is going to be mostly inert. There's really nothing left to ferment in there. I don't really want this to ferment. And when you're filling bottles, if you can see it, see the layer of foam there? I'm trying to go just up into the neck, getting as, le as little surface to air contact as possible. Okay, Learning from previous lessons here. And it's going really slow because I only have it up there. It's only a couple inches high. That way I can control it while I'm talking and we don't have spills or mistakes or things falling. Up a little bit higher than you think you need to go. And then pull the wand out and start filling this one. Now this one, we're actually going to put the, uh, the oak in. Now we realize we didn't re-sanitize our wand after using this. But if you remember, this is our neutral mead so the only thing we added to it was the tea for the tannins um, and that is something that you could add to any mead for that mouthfeel so we're not concerned about any little bit of tannin residual tea that might be on the wand you know what for this addition hold the wand put this guy in first volume issues now they say to only put that in for about two weeks. I'm curious how you get it out. I'm betting you it floats right to the top and the first time you pour it comes out, but. For some strange reason, this reminds me of the worm in the tequila bottle. It's less slimy. <laughs> um, the idea behind it though is to give a little bit of oaking, a little bit of flavor. This is also gonna add a lot of tannins. There's a lot of tannins in wood. So it adds a lot of that wood oaky flavor that's good in, you know, a lot of whiskeys, uh, some wines, like a lot of wines are aged in oak. Same concept here. So this will be the equivalent of being aged in a big oak barrel. But if I put this in a big oak barrel, lots of surface to air contact and too much air, too much So oof, in order bad. to replicate that surface area, what they actually did to this slice is they spiraled it. So that increases the surface area that the um, liquid can come in contact with the piece of oak. I'm doing it. For those of you who are going to yell at him for adding oxygen, as you did see, we degassed this. And if that didn't add oxygen... We should just say we gassed it because we degassed and regassed <laughs> at the same time. That was not me, that was the <laughs> air. As far as you know. <laughs> now 
Now I know a gallon is more than three bottles. We plan on drinking the rest. You can already see the difference in color. I mean, obviously the tea versus no, no tea. This one should get darker though. Now this last one, we need to stop. Okay. Because the important addition needs to go in there. The fruit. I'm just gonna set this in here and hope it stays. It's almost like I've done that before. Funnel needs to be. You want it to be sanitized? Yeah, might as well. Just so nobody complains. <laughs> I, I don't really worry about people complaining so much. I really just want to give good information and not go, hey, yeah, let's just be all kinds of sloppy and, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not that way. I, I'd rather be as good as possible. Please don't burn me. Do you want me to hold it and you pour? Yes. For no apparent reason. That was not a trust issue. That was a knowledge of how ridiculously clumsy I am. And I happen to know how hot this stuff is. Now, you might say, because I'm adding mulberries to this, that this is now a Morat. Maybe it is technically. It's not, though, because... For those of you who don't know what a Morat is, a Morat is... A uh, mead made with mulberries? Mulberries. Oh, okay. Sorry. The reason why I say it's not really technically a Morat is because you have to ferment it with the mulberries. I did not ferment this with mulberries. Therefore, in my mind, it's technically not a Morat. However, it's going to be flavored like a Morat, so... More than likely. It's a more like beverage. <laughs> I'm going to call it mulberry flavored mead. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm just trying to squeeze out every last bit. It actually worked pretty reasonably well. It's uh, all pretty just, it's like jelly. Yeah. We might have to put that on toast. Try it in other stems and stuff. Yeah. And it's been boiling for like half an hour. If it wasn't for the stem, I was totally eat this. Just throw it all in there. We get to clean it up later. Okay, so as you can see, it flavored it, or colored it quite nicely. Now we're gonna just rack the rest of it off into there. No, I do not need that anymore. What I do need though, is for you to hold this down here. Someday I'm gonna build a rig just for doing racking videos. It's gonna happen. I'm not sure what it'll look like yet, but it'll be something over here-ish with the shelf. Okay, and as you can see, I'm trying to put it up into the neck. Now, when you're using a bottling wand, let it go a little bit further than you think. It's kind of terrifying. A little bit higher than you think it needs to go. And then you take it out. It's still not enough. Okay, that went up into the neck pretty good. Now, the rest of that, we're just going to put it in another bottle off screen, and we're going to drink it. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. Now, look at that color. That looks awesome. I hope I put enough in. I didn't put in a lot. I, I didn't really want to, though. I wanted it to kind of see what it did. Now, because I used whole mulberries with stems and everything in there, there's probably a little bit of tannins in that, too, being added in. Now, these have not been back sweetened. Okay? This one was because there was sugar added into that fruit, too. Plus, the fruit has some sugar in it. So... This one might restart a fermentation. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. That's why I put it in this kind of bottle so that I can flip the cop, the, flip the cop, flip the, flip the cap and find out if there's fermentation. Now, if it starts getting fizzy, I might let it go fizzy. I don't know. Or I can throw it in the fridge. It'll stop fermentation, drink it. That's all. This one's probably ready to go right away. The tea one is probably ready to go right away. This one needs about two weeks. So, those of you that are curious, I did the calculation for the alcohol um, off camera because I actually need my phone to do it, and that is our little review thing right now. It came out to 7.878. So, let's, let's just say it's about 7.8-7.9% alcohol. So, this is very light, as we said. It's meant to be, though. I did that, did that way on purpose. This is only six weeks old, and it tastes pretty good. If this sat for, like, another six months or eight months, it'd probably be amazing, which that's what I'm going to do that is going into a bottle and I'm gonna drop it in the deep age. We have a whole tub of bottles that I just age. Some of that stuff is months old, coming up on a year. Um, you'll see Viking blood again. 
that one's going to get tried when it's a year old. Uh, so we'll probably take the rest of this bottle, put it in there, age it six or eight months, and then see how it is. But these guys, we're going to do a follow-up video in a couple of weeks where we'll taste all three of these next to each other because that'll give the oak time to, to do its thing and the other two time to just meld a little bit and get used to what they are. Well, anyway, thanks, guys. thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time on City Setting. Take care. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. If you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, don't forget to hit the subscribe icon down below and hit the little bell next to it. That way you get notified of everything we do.